Hello everyone, how do we arrest the doom loop? How do we confront the most fundamental problem of declining rates of marginal return? And how do we know when we're dealing with an impossible to solve problem? How do we know when we're dealing with a problem that has no solution? Of course, there are mathematical approaches to proving that things have no solutions, but I find myself in a place of wondering right now at the most fundamental levels of assertions of our systems. We of course must take axioms and definitions into account so that we know that one thing that is in and of itself entirely its own and not another is indeed not this other thing. How do we reconcile these most fundamental concepts in structure and in life? We cannot fight against thermodynamics. However, our existence is like an eddy current, like the most opposite manifestation of the principle itself that is allowable within the bounds of thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is again the logos. The logos is thermodynamics. The fundamental logic of the universe, the fundamental logic of all living and non-living systems is thermodynamics. The fundamental logic of the aggregation of like features, magnetisms, and neighborliness, and the, and the accumulations of rich get richer phenomena in worlds with rules like cellular automata, very simple and iterative, and converging on solutions from which we cannot derive the rule set exactly and from the rule set we cannot exactly predict the results other than by computationally realizing them. Are the computational realizations of the manifestation of life and living the answers to the problems that we're seeking to confront? Is there a possibility of arresting the doom loop? Is there a possibility of getting ahead of declining marginal returns. It is suggested that if we do indeed become rational consumers and rational actors that we can devise pathways by which our investments can most mitigate declining marginal returns. We can, we can use a new energy source to finance against declining marginal returns, or we can indeed reverse or the curvature or enter new field spaces, if you will, if I'm not being completely uh, a, a butcher to the, to the language here, as I've just, just done. So the question is, the most important question in some ways, and the unsolvable question in my suspicion, how do we arrest the doom loop? How do we get ahead of ourselves so that we do things before it's so uncomfortable that we have to? Now, one way that we might do this is to imagine the collapse as the solution in and of itself and to reimagine our connotation and our emotional associations with the idea of collapse. Because collapse is an economic necessity, it is an economic solution. Collapse is a redistribution, collapse is a reordering of the cost-benefit ratio. Collapse is a catastrophe for later observers it is a catastrophe perhaps for administration. It does not have to be that way for everybody. And we can indeed get in front of the rail car together and we can decide to free ourselves from this system. 
that has a mind of its own and has a direction of its own, but only in so far as its rules are accepted, adhered to, obeyed, and indeed enforced by the oppressive violence that is late capitalism and early neo-feudalism. Violence is the only argument. As JFK once allegedly said, something, <laughs> some kind of paraphrase here, we need every patriot to be a minute man. You need to have a love for freedom and you need to have an orientation toward realizing that its procurement is one of our greatest legacies as, as humans in our history of serfdom and neo-feudalism and our history of slavery as a species, as polities, as so-called civilizations, as so-called modernists, as so-called moderns, we still so fully inhabit our roles of slavery, wage slavery, servitude, oppression, inequality that is a mask for the violence and, and truly a maze that is put between those who are seeking the betterment and the dignity flourishing and felicity and wellness of human beings in the 21st century and beyond. This idea of inequality is a maze between us and between conquering the oppressors, between simplicity and complexity, there is so much difference. Complexity is a weapon used by the oppressors against those who, in many cases, do not have the time or the resources to procure the education and even with the education then to undergo the exercise of putting the challenges together and framing them in a way that is useful to us. How do we arrest the doom loop? How do we get ahead of ourselves? How do we get ahead of declining marginal returns? How do we free ourselves from the oppressors and get off of this doom loop runaway trolley, big problem railway car, and at least defer on the, on the imminent global collapse. Because collapse can only happen in a vacuum, but where there is no vacuum, as is the case today, in this global system, we will all fall together when we fall. We will all go together when we go. How do we get ahead of ourselves in this way? How do we lean into collapse and reordering? How do we free ourselves from the trolley and the railway car? Do We do not have to let it roll over us. We can choose the conditions of collapse and we can choose the collapse that we want. And that is the choice that we have to make because collapse is certain just as is the case for every single individual, just as is the case for us, collapse is certain for us at that level. That is why I believe we can arrest the doom loop. That is why I am not completely hopeless, cynic that I am. I can reserve a discipline of hope for the fact that individuals can arrest downward spirals of doom loops in their lives. In our lives, we can do this we can therefore do it as a collective. As a collective, we can do this. We can, we can recognize and mitigate our pollutions. We can recognize and mitigate our melting of all of the ice. Imagine an iceless earth at the, at the poles. It's not something we want. We can mitigate, we can slow these things down. We can prioritize our investments into energy and into reorderings, the necessary restructurings of our socio-political organizations. Or we can be oppressed and realize our dystopias and our apocalypses and our hells. Can we arrest the doom loop? Can we arrest the doom spiral? I believe we can. 
I believe we can do this. It is by way of choosing our collapse. It is by choosing our values. It is by realizing that each and every conversation we have with our loved ones, with our neighbors, with our friends and our families, with our mortal enemies, with those with whom we most disagree, these are the most important conversations. These are all important conversations because if we can frame our plight in the light of our oppression at the hands of the oligarchs, at the hands of these internationally mobile financial elite who own our systems of govern governance, who own our representative structures, if we can frame it as a fight against our declining marginal returns and realizing them by non-productive extraction that doesn't go into a real economy, but goes into the worst kinds of deterioration and accelerations of the doom loop. How do we arrest the acceleration of the doom loop? How do we get ahead of the disintegration of our discourse, the disintegration of our political existence and our political meaningfulness? How do we get ahead of the disintegration of our representation by, of, and for the people, rather than in the face of the representation by, of, and for the corporations, and for the capital class, and for their life raft in the face of the ecological crisis and end of the world that they know they are creating by virtue of planned obsolescence and by virtue of all of the wasteful additive features that are meant to magnify consumption and the liquidation of all living things and non-living things into money. We are changing everything into money. We are a great money changer and that's, that's what we're doing. So can we arrest that cycle and that doom loop? And it's not exactly by virtue of deep growth that we're going to do that. And it's not by virtue of innovation that we're going to do that. The innovations themselves pose the need for specializations and the need for technological advancements that require the extractions and the energy and demand and necessitate thereby the declining marginal returns that characterize and mandate collapse. It is not by virtue of innovation, therefore, that we can obviate the declining marginal returns and collapse. It is not by degrowth alone that we can do this. We need to reprioritize and restructure our investments and our consumption and our lifestyles. And is that possible? Of course that's possible. Of course that's possible, but to what extent is that possible given our cultural conditioning, which we mistake obscenely for our, our nature and our evolution. We cannot parse these things because of how destructive and violent a process late capitalism and early neo-feudalism neo is turning out to be and has ever been for its 400 year plus long run. How do we arrest and get ahead of the doom loop? We do whatever little thing we can think to to stop making more capitalism each and every day. Of course there are features here that are structurally real insofar as they will use violence and oppression against us to maintain themselves. We must socially organize ourselves at a global level against the forces that are oppressing humanity such that we can reap the great benefit more so than we have to turn it into bombs and guns and the liquidation of all life into warfare and monetary gain. Yes, we have the Thrasymachus problem, we have the might makes right problem, we have the problem that disarmament is a fantasy and a delusion and something that we cannot do, but we can restructure and reorder the way in which we are armed and reprioritize the value system 
with which we arm ourselves and with which we engage in conflict and with which we structure conflict and how we negotiate conflict. These are all of the epicenters, these socio-political structurings that may or may not give us the fluidity and the flexibility to bend rather than break, to midwife a society into a new future that is livable and that has a quality of life that is bearable and indeed enjoyable, perhaps more so than is the current condition for many. It is possible. Can we arrest the doom loop? Yes, we can. Of course we can. Of course we can do that. We can do it within ourselves, and we can join together in doing it, and we can recognize our oppressions, speak of them at the very least amongst each other. Those conversations matter more now than ever. It is actually the abstract value of your understanding of what values need to change and what mechanisms of slavery and oppression are unbearable that are more important now than they have ever been because we are on a timeline here. If you are concerned about the climate, then you are concerned about human dignity, wellness, flourishing, and felicity, and the livable quality of life on earth. If you are concerned for these things, then we share concerns in arresting the doom loop and in getting ahead of our worst tendencies and finding how can we tap the brakes instead of flooring the accelerator. And indeed, where and when, with what orientation, do we floor the accelerator? Because we must choose the conditions and the terms upon which we bend and not break, or that we do collapse? Which parts of the system do we need, indeed, to lop off parasites as they are, dead weight as they are? We must make the capital class a partner, or reveal it for a parasite, and do what we do with parasites. Rid ourselves of them as much as we can. We must have a symbiotic relationship as best. Can we engineer mutualisms? How do we negotiate? How do we approach? How do we organize the use of force? We cannot disaggregate force. We need to use force to protect against those who would be irrational in the use of violence. There are rational circumstances in which you use violence. Ask Norman Finkelstein about that. Ask Nat Turner about when are the circumstances to use violence. Ask, ask around when you look around at the situations in the world. Look at Myanmar and ask when are the rational circumstances for the use of violence or just self-defense. What is self-defense? And a critical question for us all. Does the Auschwitz guard have the right to self-defense? Answer that for yourself. And we have a lot of questions to answer for ourselves in the not-so-far-off future. How are we going to weather the storms that are intensifying, both literally and figuratively. Can we arrest the doom loop? Of course we can. We can arrest the doom loop. How do we do it? We arrest the doom loop by communicating, first and foremost, honestly with ourselves about who we are, and what we want, and what we're trying to achieve, and we order our value systems. Because if your values are not thoroughly thought through as your own, then you have someone else's values. We must confront ourselves so that we can meaningfully 
engage in our discourses and our dialogues, our dialogos, our dialectics with one another, with the world around us, in as meaningful a capacity as is possible. And what do I mean by that? I mean, maximize the quality of human living. Now that's an existential Dasein for you. Maximize the experiential, the experiential quality of human living, of being and producing meaning. Maximize that through interactions with your loved ones and with the world around you because it is beautiful and it is dying like we are dying and like everyone and everything we love is breaking apart with that those random oscillations of all of the particles and we're not long for this place we're not long for this world we're not long enough for this world to be caught up in silly dramas and to waste ourselves and our world and our futures for terrible commodities. Not even real food, not even real experiences, not even real love, but commodities. And we make commodities of ourselves. We make commodities of all that we love but we can arrest the doom loop by maximizing the experiential qualities of life, by maximizing our tendency to communicate meaningfully with one another, by engaging seriously with ourselves and asking ourselves what we need and what we want and how we are to get it. What, what do humans deserve? What do moderns deserve? What have humans always deserved? What did the ancients view as their just desserts? Under what circumstances? What legacies of, of the human epic do we wish to carry on? Do we know what freedom is? And if we do, do we want it? for ourselves and for those that we love because the material circumstances that would furnish it forth have been procured it's just we don't share it with everybody we share it with exceedingly few and magnify the conditions and amplify the conditions and exacerbate the conditions that would demand conflict and that would demand friction between what could be cooperating partners. How do we negotiate? How do we create mutualisms? How do we communicate? These are the means by which we can even possibly hope to mitigate our impending doom vis-a-vis -vis the doom loop that is accelerating. We encounter a disaffected and dissociated and destroyed discourse we repair it by engaging in it and creating it. We repair it by having it with ourselves and with others, by engaging in dialectic, dialogos, discussion. We must share our ideas and we must realize that we share the fundamental wish for human wellness, flourishing and felicity. And we must identify those oppressive forces that get between the vast majority of humans and having in a, in a reasonably relaxed way the necessities of life even the bare necessities of life is that not something that in all of our grandiosity we can do of course it's something we can do and that is how we get ahead of the doom loop is by our patriotism of looking at people and saying we want you to be doing well we want you to be maximizing your full potential you do that 
by supporting people to procure the things they need. So that's what we do. We support ourselves to get the things we need, to be the best that we can be, so that we can best support others to have the things that we need. Because that's actually what fruitful living is. Let's look to our anarchist or unconstitutional monarchist friend, J.R.R. Tolkien, and his depiction of the hobbit shirelings. This is the, the mode of living which he extols. This is too many meals and food and cheer above hoarded gold and a merrier world and a little bit less a little bit less organization and running around and planning and seriousness we are in complexity loops where we have to compete we're in competition spirals that create the complexity spirals that demand and necessitate the conditions of declining marginal returns on investments that facilitate, create, and demand collapse. But how do we get ahead of that process? And where can we see that process? Everywhere. Everywhere you can see declining marginal returns. So how do we get predictive about that? How do we... How do we get ahead of that? And is it possible? When are we working on a problem without a solution? Well, the ways in which it is possible are to find new energy subsidies. We must put a lot of our investment into reorganizing our energy use and efficiencies and ideally the source. Can we, can we find rebuildables that are actually practicable and in any way sustainable that are not based on fossil fuel hydrocarbons and it at this point does stretch the imagination especially given the time scales that are needed there are those modes by which we can get there but in order to scale those sources we just don't have the time given the needs especially not given the investment structures we've undertaken Are we serious about the things that we want to accomplish? So can we confront that in ourselves as honestly as is possible to put ourselves in the best position possible to best possibly engage with others, which is incredibly difficult to do, to come to any meaningful resolution or harmony how do we maximize our ability to reframe our problems and to sequester them and to resist the urge to ever more invest in complexification to solve them? And can we deal with problems with a certain level of threshold complexification? But these things depend on our capacity and ability to negotiate. Our structures under which we condition ourselves drastically inhibit our abilities to do this. But we confuse those inhibitions with human nature. There is some of our nature that contributes. Of course, we use the easy resources first of course we are brought to conflict in our worst tendencies when we are hungry and when resources are not abundant and when circumstances are dire these are human universals but how do we leverage our best human universals to get ahead of the worst that's the question and can we be asking that question we get answers to the questions that we ask. How do we ask the right questions? And how do we undertake the process of getting ahead of our declining marginal returns? Getting ahead of our collapse? Bending and not breaking? Making the best of ourselves so that we can make the best of everything and everyone that we love in the world around us. Thank you very much for listening along to this. This has been How Do We Arrest the Doom Loop and Can We? Of course we can. And we will. Given 
our imaginative and creative capacities.